sec. My my dog just got up. I'll put her outside. Okay, okay, good, good. One good. sec. We are having a Skype meeting with Zach Jomert from Upverter. Good morning, Zach. Morning. Thank you for having me. Zach, I always liked the name of your company, Upverter. <laughs> yeah, it uh, took us a long time to come up with that one, but thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Because the history goes back, I, I, I have this picture of three students. Uh, thinking about all sorts of weird ideas on what to do and how to do it and, you know, where does the money need to come from, etc. Yeah. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, um, so we, we were at the University of Waterloo uh, studying computer engineering and we had, we had just, finished, um, just finished school and we were looking for jobs and we were starting to think about what to do next and... Uh, uh, we were kind of very passionate about hardware and electronics, but we had no idea how to use any of the existing apps, and they were all terrible. And, <laughs> and we um, and, and that was how it that was how it kind of all started. For a little while, we worked out of my parents' basement because we hadn't figured out the money thing yet, and we were like, you know, fuck it, we're gonna move into mom and dad's basement, and and they'll feed us and clothe us. Clothe us. <laughs> and, and my mom did our laundry for a little while, and. Uh, that was enough to, to figure out the money and, and to figure out what we were actually doing and, and it kind of all went from there. And now we're here with, with Upfurter. And how many years later? How many years further? Seven, seven almost exactly. Our, our seventh birthday was last week. Okay, okay. And what a great week it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great announcement, I'll tell uh, but we, we'll get back to that later. The three of you decided, okay, we need, you know, we're passionate about electronics and building hardware, but all these, you know, very difficult tools, and you decided to make your own tool, and that was less difficult <laughs> to do, or? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, like, uh, it, I'm not sure it was, uh, like, in hindsight, I, I wouldn't really recommend building <laughs> software it's not really the easiest or necessarily the most fun way to spend your life but we uh, uh <laughs> we didn't realize that and so we we started building it and um paul graham used to say this kind of fun thing uh that like startup founders are are too young and too stupid to know that the thing they're working on shouldn't be worked on. And that's the only reason that they sometimes end up successful. Okay. And, and I think we very much fell into that. We were too young and too stupid to know that building cats offer was like a terrible idea. And it was very, <laughs> very hard. <laughs> and it was going to be, you know, a seven year thing. And we were pretty sure it was going to take six months. Um, <laughs> and, I, and so, yeah. So anyways, we made that mistake and we ended up building cat software. Okay. Um, but our, our whole thing from the very beginning was um, collaboration. It was uh, it, it was the impossibility of two engineers working together on a mentor graphics design or a um, you know in Eagle or in whatever. It's just this you know the moving of flat files, the the kind of old way of doing it, the lack of collaboration, all that kind of stuff. And for us, it was like if you could add. A little bit of the secret sauce that Git, you know, added to software development. If you could bring a little bit of that collaboration and that power of just a bunch of people working on the same idea from different parts of the world at the same time, picking and choosing bits and pieces of what everyone else has done. If you could do that for hardware, we thought all of a sudden you would have open source hardware. All of a sudden it would get a lot less hard. All of a sudden you could take these really, really big hard things that that hundreds of engineers have to work on together inside a big company, and you could split them up into little open source projects and people could start building cell phones in their basement. Any uh, up-to-date browser, you can you can run your PCB tools, and uh, collaborative, which is for me always a difficult word to pronounce, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, that was our big thing, and, and the reason we ended up in the cloud was just because Nothing today, or nothing when we started up further was collaborative. Like we, we were looking at this kind of with a fresh set of eyes. And if you were going to take, you know, Cadence or, you know, Pads or one of those other tools and try to like bolt collaboration on top, that's, sorry, there's a dog barking. <laughs> it's can, we pause, can we pause just for a second? Sure, yeah. 
I was saying was that the reason we ended up in the cloud was if you were going to build, like if you're going to build modern software, if you're going to take another look at electronic and product design software, and you're going to say, okay, we need to add collaboration. It's an incredibly hard thing to bolt on after the fact. Like you can't take Eagle and just like clunk bolt collaboration on the side of it. So we had to kind of start from scratch because we were thinking about things collaboratively. We didn't want to use files. We wanted to use action streams, like this idea of an undo redo history being your design, right? When you load a design, you just play back the history of the design and then you're at the present state, you load a design, you can undo, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. If you're gonna do that, if you're gonna add collaboration, like you might as well build it in JavaScript so that it runs in the web browser because you're not going to be able to use anything that already exists. And then if you build it in the cloud, all of a sudden, so much of that collaboration stuff gets really easy, right? Because it's like, well, everybody's talking to a server anyways. They're already, you know, in all these funny locations. If you build it in JavaScript, all of a sudden you get mobile for free and you run on every operating system. And now, like, you know, we were one of the first tools to run on Mac. And it was like, you know, but that, that wasn't really on purpose. Like it was... It was the collaboration was the thing that we wanted to achieve, and it was just like, well, okay, if we do that through the, black, the browser, like we just saved twenty years. And yeah, we had to do so yeah. much free yeah. because you know we get the power of JavaScript now, not without its problems. Like we run in a web browser, so like yeah. you know other cat packages are gigabits, and they yeah. you know they use GPU and all that kind of stuff, and we don't get any of that. So yeah. you know there's trade offs, but that's yeah that's how we ended up there. Can can you give a good example of you know this is not. This is typically a good example on, of, you know, a product which has been developed in the Upverter environment. And yeah. for you, you say that is the excellent example of, you know, how we like to see it work. Yeah, and, and so we've, we've got kind of a couple of these from the, big, from the big side of the world stuff that people would like really recognize and know and, and kind of grok is uh, the Facebook Open Compute project. We did a lot of work with early on because okay. you had all these companies all over the world designing these servers. And like it was a really good fit for the way that we were building up Verter. And we've done a little bit more work with them recently on some of their new projects and stuff like that. So so like they're, they're kind of the most corporate example of somebody who's yeah. trying to do this from the perspective of, and you know, and they, they haven't always hit and, and they haven't, you know, they still do a lot of stuff in Altium and it's not like, it's not like a total adoption yet. They're a big company. It's going to yeah. take some time, but yeah. there's some stuff happening there. Yeah. Um, but on the flip side, um, we, we always really love these stories about these people who never would have had access to CAD tools because they, whatever, they're running a not very powerful computer and they don't have tens of thousands of dollars and all that kind of stuff. And so, like, we helped um, through our software uh, a kid in, in Central America launch their country's first satellite because he designed it in Upverter. And it was yeah, like, right. <laughs> oh, and he collaborated with people all over the world because, like, he was the only one in his little country that was, like, <laughs> working on a satellite, right? And it was like, that is kind of magical. And, like, you know, he he discovered Upverter and he could use it because of whatever computer he had. And he didn't know a lot about electrical engineering, but he was able to figure it all out. And it was like, that was that was pretty cool. And, like, we, you know, we were able to help him build it because it's a cloud-based tool. And, like, we would get invited to the design and we would join in and help him out. We would hook him up with other engineers in other parts of the world who, who had similar problems or ideas. And, and, like, that's, like, when we talk about kind of the future of product design being collaborative, we mean it in that way. We don't necessarily mean it in the open compute way. We mean it in in the way that like software engineers build software nowadays and that's so ambient and it's so global and it's so kind of part of our modern building and culture. Like it's not, you know, we don't see the future of Upverter as being this thing that displaces cadence inside the biggest corporations in the world because it's collaborative. We see it as as making it possible for people to, to get engaged in building devices even though they're not necessarily from that part of the world. Okay, yeah. Great story about this kid. Yeah, I like that. Now, everyone who is in PCB designing and you know using PCB tools knows there is one big thing always that comes up, and that is the library. You know, you know where is the description of the components? You know how will it all work, etc. How is Upverter in that? You know, is it? You know, is there a ready-made library? If if I just log in. You know, will there be this huge library with all sorts of components and etc.? Yeah. How, how will it work? 
Yeah, and that's uh, that's become one of our superpowers. So it, it wasn't <laughs> when we started. It was it was one of our very very big problems. Um, but just a side effect of being in the cloud and a side effect of having these central servers and accumulating all this data is we've spent seven years collecting models and symbols and footprints and data for parts. And like we have the largest parts library in the world as a result, which is kind of amazing if you, you know, like you can kind of think of it as like a Wikipedia like phenomenon, right? Where like lots of people are adding parts and adding parts and you know, you got tens of thousands of engineers all over the world designing stuff and they need this resistor, they need this, they need that. Like we've got 1.3 million parts inside up for nowadays wow. as a result of that accumulation that's just happened over the seven years. And then, so now it wasn't, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't without problems. Like when we started accumulating this data, one of the big things we realized pretty quickly was that not everybody's an electrical engineer that uses Upverter and they're not all making parts to the same standard that you or I would make a part to. And so we realized this was a problem and, and uh, we built a couple of things to make it better. So we now operate a service we call the concierge. Yeah. Um, and the concierge uh, basically babysits you while you're doing your design. And it says, oh, okay, you've used a part that has not previously been verified. It hasn't been checked by us. You know, so it was made by some random user. Let's check that for you. And we'll, we have a team of engineers all over the world that this is what they do. And they will, they will automatically get notified that you're using this part. They will go check the part out. They will prove it okay. if necessary. And you'll automatically get like a pull request into your design that says, okay, there's a new version of this part. Would you like to update it? You click update, it will automatically update the part to the version that we fixed. All kind of real-time dynamic. Um, so that was, that was the thing that we kind of had to do um, just because – we have 1.3 million parts. We've got tens of thousands of users, and they're all using the same parts library. And that gets really, really messy if you don't, if you don't, you know, kind of come in and babysit that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but, but yeah, but yeah, it's one of our superpowers nowadays. You, superpowers. It's, it's yeah. just, it's just amazing. Yeah. We have in the parts library. And last week there was another sort of superpower. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> I read about Altium. <laughs> Yeah. Tell me yes. more. Tell more about you know the deal with Altium. You know how did that yeah. happen? Yeah. Of course. So it was a uh, it was officially announced uh, to the Australian Stock Exchange on Monday last week that um, Altium, which which everyone knows, yeah. um, has acquired us. So the vision behind the acquisition is that there's. There's gonna be this very real explosion of Internet thing, Internet of Things devices, yes. um, and that they're probably not all going to be designed by traditional conventional engineers. Probably the world's electrical engineers are going to continue doing what they already do. They're going to build our phones and our laptops and the circuit boards inside of our cars and stuff like that. But these like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of new devices that are going to come out of the ether over the next decade are very much going to be designed by kind of non-traditional product designers. They're not going to be electrical engineers. And I think all teams use the writing on on the wall, like you want to be the way that the world receives all these devices. You want to be in that flow. And Altium's done a wonderful job of capturing the mainstream internet of things, like the companies and the startups and yeah. all that kind of stuff. They've done a really good job of being the tool of choice for those guys. But I think they see that there's, you know, 99% of the devices are not going to be built in that way. So they've, they've done a great job of the 1%. And I think we're together betting on the 99. We want to build the product design tool for the masses, quite literally for the masses. And so when they acquired us, we got rid of our paid plan. So Upper yeah. is now totally and completely free to use. Yeah. Um, which is not to say we don't make money, it's just it's free to use. And the way that we're trying to make money um, is something that we've been experimenting with our concierge um, and that Octopart, another company that Altium acquired recently, has learned a lot about over the last couple of years, and that's indirect things. But, like but the good news is for a lot of people who are actually new to this, you know, it's all open and free now to to enter. Additional yeah. services and additional um, exactly. Exactly. experts' and you don't have opinion. To, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. okay. Well, you, you can, you know, you can go through 
designed totally for free, download your Gerber files, etch it in your basement, you know, solder the parts on the board. You could do all of that totally for free. And not only that, but you still get the benefit of all of that, that parts library that other people are paying for, of all of that wonderful stuff. And so. our pure vision, our pure vision of like a tool for a million people yeah. that they can design an entire complete product in, monetized in a really natural way, not in this like obtrusive, like give us money or you can't use the software way, yeah, yeah. but in a really natural way that flows through the product's life cycle. And like, that's pretty exciting. It's exciting that they see it the way that we see it and that they've given us that leash to, you know, kind of run. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's and, pretty cool. I'm, yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, and then perhaps time for you to, you know, to do a small pro hardware project yourself again. I, I have been tinkering with a couple of things hey. since, uh, <laughs> since this all went down, so which is cool because I haven't, I haven't got to do as much of that lately, so okay. that's pretty exciting. Okay, good. Well, thank you very much for your time, Zach. It was nice meeting you and nice hearing about you know, the story of Upfurter and uh, the, the new acquisition uh, by, by Altium. Um, good luck with all your new ventures. Good yeah. day. Back Cheers. to the dog. <laughs> Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>